So welcome to Biology of Deck 2023. Well, the first question it says what well, arrange the following organisms in hierarchy from the simplest to the most complex and state the level of organization of each of the organisms. So we have Volvox, Amoeba, Catfish, Centipede, Hydra, and Entheopoem. I would like to take them in groups. Um, I would like to group these. So when you look at Volvox, Amoeba, and then Hydra, they can be categorized or grouped into um, very organisms that, that do not find themselves in complex um, level of organization. And then the cat, fish, the centipede, and then the tapeworm will find themselves in the complex. Not to say they are actually all complex, but let's see. So we'll start with the amoeba. Amoeba is, um, the, is in a cell. Is the simplest so the level of organization is a cell then let's consider the volvox and then the hydra now hydra is um, a group of cells similar cells but when it comes to the volvox it looks like more of like a colony of different cells that are working together so the hydra will be a tissue and the volvox will also be a tissue since we are arranging in increasing order of complexity the hydra will come first. So it's a tissue. Then the volvox will also come. I said that the hydra, the cells are similar, but with the volvox, it looks like cells that are different. Volvox is on the third. That's also a tissue. Then we move on to the tapeworm the catfish and then the centipede. Now the tapeworm will come simply because the tapeworm is a motile organism with simple tissues but lacks complex organ system. So the tapeworm will come here. So the tapeworm is actually an organism. Then the centipede will also come. The centipede will come because the centipede, you know, is in a higher level and it also has the nervous system, the respiratory system, the circulatory system. But the tissues are actually simple as compared to as compared to the catfish. So the catfish will be the last. So all of these are organisms, organism. So the catfish will come because it has more developed respiratory system, circulatory system, and so on. So that's it with number one. So number one B, it says give four advantages of an organism having a complex body. So when an organism has a complex body, it's able to adapt easily, so adaptability. It's also able to um, function efficiently since complex bodies enable specialization of cells and increase mobility. Increased mobility means it can move freely and then escape predators. And then it also has high cognitive ability, ability to think, solve problems, and interact and navigate the environment. So the disadvantage of having a complex body is that there's a lot of demands energetically, like more food has to be broken down, more food has to be taken in, and vulnerability to diseases, because the system is susceptible to diseases and then infections. Then highly sensitive, highly sensitive to whatever is happening in the environment, alteration in temperature and in the habitat and then it's potentially um, susceptible to stress as well. Then the last is that the slower reproduction rate since it takes time for the organism to develop and then increase in population. So question two, adult A has a meal of fried fish and adult B has a meal of vegetables. Okay, so in the table below, name two nutrients each present in the meals consumed. So with the meal A, so you have oil in there and you also have protein. Now the end product of oil, fat and oil is fatty acid and glycerol and the end product of protein is amino acid. Now when it comes to the B, which is the a meal of vegetables. So with vegetables you can get, um, first of all, vitamins and you can also get carbohydrates. 
Now then products of vitamin is still vitamin. When in fact vitamin do not even digest. Then carbohydrates. Then product is glucose. So the next question is what's constipation? Constipation simply means difficulty in passing out too. And the I I says which of adults A and B is less likely to suffer from constipation. The one who is less likely to suffer from constipation is adults B. And just give one reason. The reason is because um, the food that B takes in contains fiber. We're in the colon or large intestine and the fiber absorbs water so feces moves freely or able to pass your bowels freely when there's moisture. Name one class of food that reduces constipation. Fruits. The next question says, state for benefits that A may derive from the type of food consumed. A took in protein food. So, four benefits of adult A. Four benefits the adult A may derive from the type of food consumed. So, benefits of protein, benefits of um, fat and oil. So, protein helps in repair of one-out tissues, helps in the formation of enzymes and hormones. Then oils are also... Um, source of energy. Fat and oil also help in the absorption of fat soluble vitamins. Then the D says name three other classes of food that make up the balanced diet. So we have tubers, we have fruits, we have cereals. So the question three says explain briefly the following pathogens. Pathogens are microorganisms that cause diseases. Examples are um, viruses, bacteria, fungi. Then health is a complete state of physical and then psychological well-being. Then sanitation is the process of um, keeping the place hygienic. State three benefits of improved sanitation on the community. So spread of diseases is reduced. Prevention of air pollution. The air is, is safe to breathe in and other sources are also protected. Yes. Then the next question is asking, what is sewage? Now, sewage is a combination of wastewater from homes, businesses, and industries. So all of um, these waste, including some solid that you find in, it's called sewage. Name two sources of sewage. I already mentioned them. We have our homes, we have industries, we have businesses. Then what is sewage treatment? Sewage treatment is the process of removing the contaminants and impurities from wastewater to make it safe to discharge in the environment. You know, this sewage is definitely going to be discharged in the environment and it has to be treated so that when it gets in the environment, it doesn't cause harm. State three benefits of treating waste. So the environment is protected. Then the sewage, which is the water, can be reused. And then water sources are protected and it also preserves the ecosystem. Then the next one is what is ecological succession to succeed something so interaction in the um in the environment and other organisms succeed the other so ecological succession is a gradual process is a process whereby the structure of a particular community changes over time and you know as a result of activities of man and as well as natural activities can lead to ecological succession. So you have a, a natural environment, all of a sudden, this natural environment is changed into another. So initially the place was waterlogged and later the place becomes dried up, like, you know, the place is dried and different organisms have to now live in there. That's ecological succession. So we have named Complete the table below by stating two major factors that bring about ecological succession and give two examples of each of them. So two factors that brings about ecological succession. So factors that bring about ecological succession. We have disturbance of events like let's say a natural disaster. And example of these natural disasters can be volcanic eruption, you can have flooding as well. We can have biological interactions. So we have predation and we can also have mutualism. 
name the type of succession that will take place in a forest where mining has already occurred. So the type of succession that will take place over there is secondary succession. Secondary succession because the, um, the place was already colonized by a particular group of organisms and they, they are later you know, destroyed and different types of organisms will have to take over again. So the next question says, describe briefly the succession that occurs in forest where mining has already occurred. So over time, plants begin to um, grow from there. Now they start with the grasses and the weeds. They die, they decompose, then other um, a little bit bigger trees, herbaceous trees begin to um, grow, they die, they decompose, and tree, bigger trees actually begin to colonize the place, and then living organisms, you know, smaller, smaller living organisms get into the size of rodents, then the bigger organisms will take over and continue. So the new um, ecosystem is formed. Two is by which the following factors support ecological succession. So how does rainfall support ecological succession? So when there's rainfall, there's moisture, and then also there's nutrient redistribution at the place where the ecological succession is taking place. And then wind as well. Wind helps in the dispersal of seed, and as well as cleaning of canopy spaces and creation of gaps in a plant community so that new plants can be formed when the sun shines on the, on the smaller plants. And then last set of questions, we have state two characteristics of each of the following orders of class insecta. So we have Hymenoptera. With Hymenoptera, they have membranous wings and they also undergo complete metamorphosis. So exam example is a honeybee. Then the second one is a Diptera. Diptera, example is housefly and they have one pair of wings. Then we move on to the last one, which is Lepidoptera. Lepidoptera, they have large scale covered wings. An example is the monarch butterfly. Oh, okay, the last part is even asking for examples. So we have Hymenoptera, which is a honeybee, membranous wings, then the Diptera, which is housefly, and the Lepidoptera is the monarch butterfly.